So how do you use Logos to make lessons and sermons? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this video. We're just going to walk right through it. And if you're just joining us, my name is Pastor Addison, and I'm the founder of Everything Church Pro and the pastor at Grants Pass Baptist Church. And if this is your first time joining us, I encourage you to look down there and hit that subscribe button and that like button and uh, ring that bell notification, especially if you're somebody who wants to be able to dive into God's Word and dig out the juicy nuggets. This channel's for you. And so we're going to jump right in. I'm not going to rush through it, but I just want to walk you through how to use Logos, especially if you're going to be using it for making lessons or sermons. And I do want to say, if you are interested, down in the description, there's a special affiliate link. It helps the channel, but right now, I think you can get 27% uh, off the package that I use. I use the Gold Baptist, the Baptist Gold uh, package. And so if you're interested in getting a big discount this month only, you can get 27% off the Baptist Gold and other packages as well, but use the link down in the description. So let's just jump right in. So here is the, uh, the screen you'll get right when you open it. And so it might be intimidating. You might be looking at this thinking, holy smokes, what am I gonna do? Uh, but I'll just kind of show you what's going on here. So if you look, there's some of my different books that I'm reading right here, and you can just pick up where you were reading. Uh, you also have your recent sermon that you're working on. You also can use your prayer list. So here's my family prayer list. Here's my church prayer list that I pray for uh, daily. You've got some, uh, some of these devotionals that you can go through as well, and there's so much more. I'm not going to kind of cover everything on here, but let's just jump into what would I do if I was getting ready to start a sermon. I usually will open up the Bible, and I will drag it over to this side. You can have it to either side here, and I'll go to where I'm preaching. So this Sunday, I'll be in John, and I'll be in John chapter 2. So I'll go to John 2, and I'll come to where we're going to be starting here. And so we're starting in verse 12. But let's say that I'm reading through this. I'm maybe marking it up, highlighting it, which you can highlight. You can pull this up. You can have your normally used highlighters, or you can push this, and you've got quite a bit of different things that you can do in your highlighting over here. So, I mean, there's just so much. You can see that. There's a lot here. But let's say I'm, I'm studying this, and I'm highlighting, and I'm doing things, but now I'm done doing my own study, or, or maybe I want to take it a step forward, and, and I want to actually look at some Greek words here. I can do the Bible word study. This is a big tool. Or I can select this verse, come over here uh, to these tools, and I'm going to select exegetical guide. This is something I use all the time. Uh, many times after service, someone will come up to me like, well, the Greek here, what is that? What's that word? And I'll just pull up on my iPad the exegetical guide, and we can walk right through the verse together. And so you'll see it highlights the Greek and the English. So if you're just kind of working your way through, you can see which one is which and just kind of follow it along, which makes it very convenient. But then let's say you want to look at a specific word. Let's say that I'm trying to look past my camera here. Let's say you want to look at the word continued. And you're like, what is this? You know, it brings you right down here. And now you're able to see they continued. It's right here. Amon or Amayon. Amenon. There it is right there. And it's a, ver a version of the word meno right here. And now you're like, okay, so what's, it's a verb, it's aorist, what's aorist? It'll bring up, if you're not a Greek uh, professional, it'll bring up a description of what the aorist tense is. You got the active, you got the indicative, third person, plural, and it's a finite verb. It's a finite verb. And so you have here this, plus all of the different um, lexicons that if you want to look even deeper into each one of these. Now, let's say you want to just look at meno even more. So you'll see I hover over meno, and you'll see that it says abide, abiding, abideth, remain. But you want to even go in more in-depth on just this word. You click it, and it brings up the Bible word study tool. And so with this, you'll see how it's translated in, the, in your translation here. And so right here we see it's translated tarried. It's translated abode, remained, abideth. And that's cool by itself. But the thing I really love is, as a pastor is being able to do an actual word study using this. If I click dwelleth, I can now go through and see every single time in the New Testament that it's translated dwelleth. Every time it's just brought up and I can start to do that. Um, and so this is something that you will definitely use. And so right now we're looking at uh, continuing not many days, right? So we're using this word. Let's see if there's how many times it's used for continued. It's used 10 out of the 120 times. And you can kind of look here that this is the first time it's translated continued 
in the New Testament right here. But you can read the other ones and get a good sense for this word. And so uh, right here it says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Continue in my word if you want to be my disciple. Uh, continue in faith and charity and holiness. Uh, continue, and I'm obviously taking these all just right here, not not giving you all the context. But you can kind of look. Let brotherly love continue. And you'll see there's a linkage here. And you'll get a good feel for the word just by seeing how it's translated and used in other places in the New Testament, okay? And so let's just say I'm studying here, I'm looking, I'm making notes myself, uh, which if you want to make notes in Lagos, you can come up here to the Documents tool, and you can open up uh, some notes right there. You can make a new document. You can see there's a bunch of different types of documents that you can make. Um, but let's, let's see, where is the notes tool? Here we go. There's the notes. So you can make different notebooks. You'll see, um, let me let me pull up the notebooks right here. So I have one for counseling, one for hermeneutics, one for my wife when she was working on a, a, a baby shower. She's also using it. I have stuff for my Old Testament survey, stuff for sermon prep, sermon scribbles. If you've taken our uh, how to make a sermon or a lesson course, you know about sermon scribbles. Also spiritual formation notes. And so you can make different notebooks to stay very organized as you're doing your study. But let's say you've now done a lot of your study and you want to see what other people say about this text. So you're done studying, you want to access your commentaries. So what you can do is you can just highlight this right here. And I just go to study and it'll bring up all the commentaries you have. Now I have these set to priority. I'm not gonna walk you through how to prioritize different resources, but I have mine prioritized in the way that I want them. Usually when I'm doing a study, the first three are the ones I use most. And I might do four and five, maybe even six, uh, but I don't dive into all of these. There's so many other ones here, uh, but these are my go-tos. And let's say I want a little snippet, I can just push that down. Or if I wanna see exactly what he's saying, I can come here and just start to read through his thoughts. If you get, I think it's bronze and above, I might be wrong, but you have this feature called the read aloud feature, and this is great when you're trying to consume a lot of content. Um, I love listening. <laughs> I know it's it's robotic, it's not you know perfect, but I will click that read aloud and just listen to this commentary and what he thinks about it, and then I might click on the a New American Commentary, and then I might click on the Christ Center one, or, or Wearsby's, and just listen to their different thoughts, making some notes uh, on my own. Uh, but you can move it around. But let's say now we've done some good study, we've done our sermon scribbles, we have a rough outline, okay? Now, what we can do is we can open up the Sermon Manager. I put mine right here, and the cool thing about this, so let's say there's a tool that you really like, so let's say it's the exegetical guide. You can drag it right here, and it becomes a little shortcut. So I'm opening up uh, the sermon manager, and you'll see all my sermons are here for this year. And if I can, do, if I want to, I can do all my sermons. So even into last year, we can look at those. I'm just gonna go back to to this year. Come down here. Let's click on this, and I'm going to say this is a sermon from May seventh. Uh, so I'm gonna push add untitled sermon. This is actually the title, Does Your Temple Need Cleansing? So there's the title. The series, this keeps it all organized, is, journey, oh wow, that's great spelling, Journey Through John. And then I can put the passage in here, which is John 2, 12 through, let me actually look, where are we stopping? I think it's just through the end, verse 25. So... We'll come over here to 12 through 25, push enter. I can put a short description in here. I can put some notes. I always do this, okay? So I'm put Grant Pass Baptist, and it's a morning service. So this will help keep me organized. And if I preach this ever again, I can push add occasion. And so let's say I preach this a month from now at a different church. I can put the date the place I preached it, and the date. And this just really helps keep you organized uh, as you're traveling around. So I'm going to now go ahead and... Uh, be, actually, I'm going to open this. Yep, yeah, we'll open this up. Now here's the sermon document, but I want to show you this. This radio calendar is actually really nice in getting a good overview of what you've been preaching on. So you can see in January, I had a series called Ambassadors for Christ. And then I went from Ambassadors Christ, um, for Christ to a series on Revival. And then I jumped into Journey Through John. 
You can see I finished out the overview of the Bible on Sunday evenings, and then I went right here on Sunday evenings and I'm doing apologetics. So it really gives you an overview of what you're giving and what you're feeding in the church. And so I love that. But now we have it open. Does your temple need cleansing? I usually put intro right here and then I'll work on my introduction and I use the format I teach in another video, which I can link up in a card also in our course. Um, but let's just say I'm starting it out and we're going to talk about the Queen Mary dot, dot, dot. And I'll write out the entire illustration. Once I write out the illustration, I can come up here and make it into an illustration format, okay? And you'll see it's making slides and everything. Super cool. But now I have my illustration. This green line and this font like here uh, shows me that's an illustration. So while I'm preaching, I can see that. Queen Mary, and I'll say, this is not how I write sermons, by the way. Does your temple need cleansing? All right, so we have... We have this first start to this, okay? So now we can make our first point, okay? The outside looks clean. All right, that's number one. And I want that to be a main heading. I'll come up here, heading here. Uh, put one. The outside looks clean, all right? And we can right ba 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 here and we're going to say okay actually this is from John 2 um to 12 boom and it just inserts the verse and it puts the slide in there you've got your talking okay so so what i usually do when i'm laying out a sermon is i'll have the text i'll explain let me just do, do this i'll ex explain then illustrate then apply okay so i do that and then i transition more on this in that video i linked as well as in our course and then i'm now at number two which is the inside was filthy and so we have here heading one makes the slide have our verse and about the nastiness and really the flow of thought here let me just pull the bible over here for you to see uh, we see that the outside of the temple looked good. And the whole application is, guys, this could be you. Your outside can look really good. Uh, but it, God doesn't just care about the outside. He's very zealous. We can have that here. Very zealous that our inside also be clean. Okay? And so we'll have the inside was filthy. And then, uh, again, explain, illustrate, apply, transition. Number three, Jesus cleansed the temple and the point there is hey the truth is if you keep this stuff in your life and you really are a child of god he will discipline you <laughs> it won't be pleasant uh so maybe you should get the animals out before he has to come and, and chasing you and so we have this and i love this maybe you're looking for some illustrations uh, i like to use different resources sermonillustration.com is always good but i love this that they put in to Lagos is a popular quote finder. So let's say I'm looking for one on the temple. Let's just hit that. So the death of Jesus takes place in this gospel on the afternoon when the Passover lambs were being killed in the temple. Not really what I'm looking for, okay? But you can scroll through here and you can see different quotes on the temple. Um, let's just put in uh, chastening. Let's see if there's anything on that. Chastening is simultaneous wrath and mercy. And so maybe we're down here and we're talking about Jesus cleansed the temple and we want to use that. We just drag it. It makes a slide and puts the quote in there. Chastening is evidence of God's hatred for sin and love for his people. Well, that's a delicious quote right there. Let's say that that's the quote you actually want to use. You just come in here, delete that one, and you can use different ones. So you can just see here how nice this makes finding good quotes from, from men here. Uh, you've got Plato in here. Wow, interesting. We've also got uh, A.W. Tozer, Vance Havener, Charles Spurgeon. And so you can just drag them right in and use them that way. So it's a big blessing. You'll also see your notes here. So this says Sermon Notebook, but I can come here to my Sermon Scribbles. And now here's my notes that I you know, have been working on. And I can come and I can actually just drop one in. Uh, drop it right into the text. And so there's a note from Wearsby's Expository Outlines on the Old Testament. And it just dropped it right in. Um, so hopefully that 
is a help to you as you're studying. I'll give you one more tool before I let you go. This is one I love, and it's called the Canvas tool. The Canvas tool allows you to insert a passage. Let's just say we're really wrestling with John 1, 12. Let's say John, oh, John 2, 12. And let's just say through 15 right now. Just add a couple verses in here. Um, John, let me, let me see if it works here. John 2, 12 through 15. Okay, push add to canvas, and now it's here. And this is a tool I love when studying the word. Uh, it says, after this, he went down to Capernaum. And then you can select this and drag it in. He and his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And then you can say, all right. And they continued, there are not many days. And then you can say, so, and, and then I would like to just kind of break this down. And they continued, there are not many days. And the Jews Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and now we're going to see now this is an and for Jesus and so he went up and went so he went and found so this is Jesus in the temple those that sold oxen sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting and then we have this next and and when he had made a scourge of small cords then he drove them all out of the temple. And so you can mark this up. And I love this. So look at this. So we select a word. Let's say we want to look at after. You can drag this in here. And it connects the word and gives you a nice word study. Uh, obviously, I probably wouldn't put after and be really studying that. But maybe you wanted to see the word for Passover. You drag that right in there. Or, or changers of money. You want to drag that in there. Or, or you want to look at scourge. What's the word for scourge? Oh, it only occurs one time in the Bible, this word. That's interesting. You want to get some more uh, information on it. There it is. And so now you're studying. You're able to bring these highlights on there and visually see uh, what you're studying. I love using the canvas. And, and sometimes I'm thinking maybe I'll even print this off. For my, uh, for my people, but let's see if I have any of these available that we can look at that I've already done. So here's one that I've already done. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. I highlighted those the same color to start seeing the repetition of words. I wanted to see what this word dwelt was because it's a fantastic word. It means to tabernacle, to set up a tent. And we see that he's full of grace and truth. And I wanted to see what these words were. And I'm seeing the different breakdowns in the section so that when I preach this, I know what the word is saying. Because I'm not trying to preach my thoughts. I'm trying to preach the word. And, and so I hope that these different tools are a blessing. I only gave you just, you know, tip of the iceberg. Uh, I do love this feature and I'll, I'll be done. It's the preach feature. Okay, so when you're ready to preach it, you actually on your iPad or on your phone can hit preach. And now it's in a nice mode for you to click right through. So right down here, you'll see that I can just click right through. I can set a timer. And this is great. So when I go somewhere and they give me a set amount of time, I click this. And I know that I'll be done at least at the right time. And it helps you pace your sermon. You want the slides shown? You can have the slides shown. You want to adjust how big or small? All of that's there. Preaching mode is so, so good. What I used to do is I used to make a PDF. And uh, the PDF, once I would export it and put it into iBooks or whatever, the PDF reader, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find my uh, thing here. I would, I would export it into a PDF reader, but once you do that, it's locked in. You can't change it. Uh, but in Lagos, it's kind of like a PDF when you're preaching, but you can edit whatever you want. So let's say you're preaching, and all of a sudden God brings to you a really good illustration that you want to save in there for the rest of your life. You can edit it, and the next time you preach it, it's in there. And so uh, I enjoy it. There's so many good features. If you want some uh, more on Lagos, please let me know. I hope this was a good little uh, starter on how to get studying. Uh, but again, if you have not subscribed, make sure you look down there. Hit that subscribe button. Join our growing community. And uh, if you want Lagos, use that link down there and get a big discount. But we'll see you guys soon.